Hi everybody, this is Rob Redman of 3D World and I'm just going to give you a little introduction into how the fire system works in Maxwell 2.5. Now, in previous versions of Maxwell uh, you could get stunning results but it meant doing lots of test renders um, which, especially with previous versions of Maxwell, meant a long wait um, because although the results were great it did take some time. Um, now version 2 did speed things up quite a lot um, along with a, a few other improvements now 2.5 introduces introduces um, a new feature which we're going to take a look at here um, before we go into it I'm just going to show you what's involved in my scene so I've got this uh, sofa model and then these three kind of paper lanterns and then the backdrop which is kind of like a, uh, a photographer's psych so you can see it's just a, a curved background um, and I might just push that over just a little bit just so it's a bit more central okay so all I want to do is I want to just make sure that my lighting looks nice um, and that uh, my camera angle when I set it up um, is looking good and all my depth of field all that sort of thing um, and I might want to experiment with a few different materials and instead of kind of exporting this out to Maxwell opening up in the studio or the standalone renderer um, and then coming back in changing the materials so on so forth you can now do this all within the host program um, as things stand you can't do it in every host program but I think the main ones are all catered for, so Cinema 4D that you can see here, uh, Lightwave, Maya, 3DS Max, uh, most of the big boys are all, all, all catered for already, um, and I'm sure the other ones will be along soon enough. Okay, so we've got that, I've got a selection of materials. At the moment I've got this uh, kind of brushed stainless steel on the frame, um, and I've got the red leather on the cushion part. I've just got a plain white kind of painted material, it's kind of slightly roughened uh, material on the psych and I've got this Japanese lantern on the three lanterns um, which I have just boosted the intensity a little bit because um, the way Maxwell emitters work if you duplicate um, an object which has material on it the intensity is spread over so one of these is actually you know just touch more than 33% uh, intensity of what it should be Okay, so I've got the sofa there, I've got the psych there, I've got my three lanterns, and I've got my Maxwell scene, which you'll find under plugins, Maxwell um, scene, and you just drop that in, and you can see here that you've got a few of the other options, and they're pretty much what you would have seen in previous versions, um, with the exception of convert cinema materials. And what that does is it just takes any normal cinema 4D materials and converts them into MXMs, which is the Maxwell native format for a material. Okay, so let's have a look at our attributes of the scene, the Maxwell scene. And what we have here, let's just make a bit more room, is if you've used Maxwell before, you'll be used to it. Uh, we've got the output panel, which lets you choose where you're going to save your renders to, uh, lets you add in the Z buffers, uh, all the object IDs, those sort of things. If you're going to re render out multi-pass um, renders, then you can do that here. Um, you can also uh, make a few changes to camera settings because uh, Maxwell is an unbiased renderer it uses your kind of normal camera settings so you've got f-stops and um, ISOs like you would with a film um, if we move on to actually we'll just talk about this this here this is the uh, the render the scene using the settings that you put in your render settings so if you choose a 1280 by 720 render here if you click the R button that's what you'll get if you click the A button next to it, that will render whatever you're looking at in the current uh, view. So if I had this view active and you can see it's got the white board around it, then you would get a render from the top down. But we'd want the front view, so we'll do that here. But it's quite useful just checking different views. This button here exports your Cinema 4D scene or whatever host scene you're working in um, into Maxwell Studio, which is the kind of standalone setup um, software that you can use uh, just to kind of get everything going on its own without needing host software. Um, you can also just save out to a Maxwell scene on its own without opening up in the studio. And then we come to the exciting one, Fire, which we're going to leave just for a second because we'll move over to the Engine tab. Um, and for those of you not familiar with Maxwell, you've got maximum render time because basically Maxwell will keep on rendering and cleaning up the image until you think it's ready. 
um, and the, the idea behind that is you know it gives you freedom and you can just kind of wander off have a cup of coffee or in the old days you could wander off have a vacation or a holiday uh, come back and your render will be done now it's a balance between render time and sampling level um, the default uh, as you can see touch under a thousand for rendering time um, and sample level 25 which is usually more than you would ever need you can also specify the number of threads uh, I'm going to put uh, I'll just put four in here I've got eight um, available but I'm, I've got eight cores available I'm just going to use four cores because I'm using my uh, screen capture and I've got some other software running as well so for the fire options I'm going to keep sample level to six quality to six and six threads that's fine gamma that's all set for my tone mapping simulens simulens is quite exciting you can um, you can add the kind of scattering and diffraction effects that you would get with a real glass lens so you get those kind of aberrations and you can add in an aperture map which would be kind of a hexagonal map that would apply to the back of the lens and then you can also have an obstacle map so if you could have a, a finger marked lens on the front so you get the effect of actual having a bit of grease on your lens that sort of thing environment you can choose between physical sky sky dome image base so hdri images exrs you can put in there or none uh, you can choose to use a sun or not and we'll have a look at that in a minute um, and then you've got all the different settings for your physical sun um, your time and location of the actual sun and you can choose to show it in the viewport which gives you the direction there and the actual location of the sun okay and the final thing you've got there at the bottom it is you can export your sky uh, as an HDR which is quite useful sometimes there is a final box here for cinema and this is just to choose how the uh, interaction works between the host application and Maxwell render itself so let's go back to environment and I think the first thing to do is to hit fire and see what happens. So what we've got here is the fire engine opens up. And I'm just going to resize this. And the first thing it does is it voxelizes the whole scene. And you can see that instantly we've got quite a lot going on. We've actually got quite some decent information coming through here. Now, it may be a little bit too bright and that's fine. But actually what I think I might do is turn the sun off just so you can see the difference it makes automatically updates and you can see that the image is less bright to start with um, but also it's uh, slightly bluer and cooler and that's because the sun has a temperature value which you can see here now I'm going to go down to the location and I'm going to go to let's load in Europe and London it's about as close I think on that list to, to where I am and we should see an update in a second uh, when I click now it's going to turn the sun position and you can see that because this is kind of getting on for what time is it now it's um, almost 7 p.m. Um, you can see that the, the darkness has gone down and most of our illumination is actually coming from the paper lanterns but what you might find if I move that out of the way is if I go to my top view it's just view where my sun is it's actually coming from behind the psych so what you can do is you can take the ground rotation and you can just flip that around and bring it over so that we're actually getting some illumination back now our top view not particularly pretty so let's go back to our main view and then it updates instantly for you and you can see we've got the the very warm sunlight going on there and you can see the shadows that the sun's producing okay now this isn't an attractive image so let's do something a bit different let's turn this off the physical sky and let's use an image based lighting so I'm just going to find one that I like which will be that one and you'll see that this is just loading the bitmaps now it's rendering now this is quite a dark EXR for this particular use so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my intensity up to let's say let's boost it quite high let's try eight times the intensity we should see this now update and you can see yes brilliant that's exactly what we wanted to do now so far all I've been doing is changing the amount of lights and intensity um, and we haven't really looked at the actual model itself now I'll just move that over what if I wanted to get a little bit closer 
well I can do that and I can even turn around the camera and zoom in and I could look at a specific area of the model and turn that around like this now you're seeing some parts of the image you wouldn't necessarily want to see but you get the idea it's very versatile and it really lets you kind of work out what's going on in quite an intuitive way now if you're working on a, on a scene this is kind of invaluable I think because the unbiased nature of Maxwell render really lets you get to grips of what's going on now we can also just change a material so I'm going to take this leather material and I'm going to just replace the red leather with it drop that on there and you should see any second it sees it says rendering down here sometimes I have found um, and this is the only downside I have found that when you're replacing a material rather than a lighting method you just need to go back into your scene turn it on and off or you can hit the uh, the, the resend information here and then it revoxelizes that circular icon there you've also got it up here will resend the information from cinema um, and you kind of reload everything so it takes just a second longer but it works very very well okay so now I'm just going to spin this back around I don't even really need to see what's going on behind this window because fire is so good for just kind of navigating your way around um, I do want to just move that make sure this is kind of looking level and nice and to bring it down I just want those lanterns in view and I'll bring that across this will now update and I think I might take my HDR I might boost that even more I'm going to double it again to 16 you'll see you could see the message there it's just reloading the bitmaps and this is bringing a little bit more light back into the image for us okay so I can screen map this as well and that just maps the the sky kind of to the kind of what would effectively be behind you um, rather than wrapped around a dome which is if you uncheck that it has it wrapped around a dome okay so that's kind of the basics and all you really need to know about fire um, and it's such a good system I really encourage anyone that's uh, thinking about upgrading to a, a new render system to look at Maxwell uh, V-Ray is very popular and also very powerful but I think truly um, the way this works in most host applications is quite intuitive and quite powerful um, so depending on your use I would say that Maxwell is a good bet for interiors and product shots um, whereas I think some of the other engines that might be a touch better for uh, exteriors and architectural work of that nature. But I hope that's been of some interest and I'll be back with another review soon.